Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is PCI Pass-Through as part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So this is a practical checklist for doing PCI Pass-Through on vSphere. Um, so there's two parts to this checklist. Part one covers the ESXi host itself. So one of the features that you'll need to enable in the BIOS is memory map IO above four gigabit, uh, gigabytes. So there may be different terms for this feature in different BIOSes, but it's generally a term which suggests something about memory mapped IO above four gigabytes being enabled or being um, able to be used. So uh, on my Dell T3610s, this is what it's called, but there might be a slightly different setting on your own. Uh, and that will require a shutdown, it will require it changing in the BIOS, and it will require a restart. Um, the next thing is that we need to actually um, enable individual devices for PCI pass-through in the vSphere client or the vCenter client. Um, and what we do then, once we've enabled these devices for pass-through, is we'll add one or more individual PCI devices to a virtual machine. We need to make sure that automatic CPU and MMU virtualization is set, and we need to reserve all guest memory for any virtual machine which has PCI pass-through enabled. Um, what we do then is we install the operating system, and now install now instead of installing the VMware drivers for things like VMware SVGA 3D, we will use the native drivers that we would normally do on a physical um, desktop or laptop or server. So we install the native driver as a uh, for the pass-through device because it appears as that actual um, device with the same PCI IDs as you would do on a physical box. Um, and just a, a comment here is that if you're doing this with graphics cards, because the web-based console in the vSphere client uses the um, VMware SVGA 3D driver, um, if you're not using that, you may not be able to see anything on screen, in which case you need, need to you may need to download the VMware Remote Console application and view things through that because the web one is dependent on a on a different graphics driver. Um, the other thing that I've had to do with this is physically plug a monitor into the PCI card uh, because if it didn't detect a monitor hanging out the back, it didn't work properly. Or even plug in, um, there are devices you can buy online which, which emulate a monitor, so they're like a dummy monitor device. So if you have trouble with this, actually f try physically plugging a monitor in or using one of these dummy monitor devices. I've, I've found this with Windows, I haven't found it with Linux, but it is one of those things that can trip you up if you're not aware of it. Um, the next thing then is there are some configuration settings which are not required in every instance, but these um, more advanced parameters can help you with, with certain problems that people have experienced. The most common one um, is to hide the hypervisor from a host, and there's no other reason for this other than some graphics cards manufacturers um, decide that some cards are suitable for mobiles and desktops and some for servers, and if you try to use a desktop card in a server, Although it's physically capable of working, the drivers will block some of those features or functionality or stop them from working. So the first option we've got here is an advanced setting. And in simple terms, this just hides the fact that the machine has been virtualized. So it hides the hypervisor from the virtual machine. So a normal desktop card can be used in a server without the driver checking um, if you are actually using it in a desktop or a server. So I have this problem all the time with NVIDIA cards um, and as soon as you change this setting um, it effectively cannot tell that it's running on a hypervisor anymore and the drivers start to work properly again. Uh, the other thing you might want to look at is this 64-bit um, um, memory management and I.O. Um, and one of the things we need to set for each virtual machine is that pass-through is enable is able to use this 64-bit MMIO. So we set PCI pass-through uses 64-bit MMIO to true. And then there's a companion setting that goes with that, which is to set the size of uh, memory reservation that we've got or the size of the window that we're able to do that with. And if you've got one graphics card, the recommendation from most places is that set that size in gigabit to 32. 
If you've got two cards, set it to 64. You may find that if your cards aren't quite as powerful and don't come with as much memory, you can you can use a lower setting than this. But just to get things working, or just to make the, sure that um, any issues are ironed out, I'd recommend going with this 32 or 64. And I guess you can try um, dropping it down lower and seeing if there is a, a, a better setting for your card, but these should work for most of them. Um, one of the things you might want to do is, ha is, is Google or search on the internet for PCIe base address register because that's where these values come from. It's the terminology or the technology used for pass-through cards to use um, and extended parts of memory. So if you want to know more about what these settings are or why we've used them, just search for that PCIe base address register or BAR as it's also known. So here we are on an ASXi host, so I'm hitting the host directly rather than using the vCenter client just for this one. And what you can see is if I click on manage for the host, I click on hardware, and I look on PCI devices, I get a list of all the PCI devices installed in this server. Um, I've just got another one here where I've, I've clicked the box in the corner and I've filtered and I'm just showing devices that have the phrase NVIDIA in them and you'll see that I've got two Quattro P400s and their associated audio controller and I've got a K2000 and its associated audio controller. So I use the K2000 um, as the main monitor or the main graphics card for the server and the two P4000s are the ones that I pass through. Again, some people have had difficulty trying to use the same monitor that the server uses, and it can lead to problems or crashes. So if you can, use a onboard graphics card or a very simple graphics card for your um, main one in the host, and then pass through the more powerful ones to your virtual machines. So I've got three graphics cards, one used for ESXi itself to show the display when it's booted on screen, and two to be passed through to virtual machines. And what you'll see there um, when you select these is you can select the PCI devices that you want. And once you've selected them by ticking those boxes there, you click the button that says toggle pass through. And once you've toggled the pass through, the, the uh, status will change to active in the box here. So this is where you select devices and toggle the pass through status uh, to be on or off. Uh, just one thing to mention here, you can do it for any PCI device, so it could be a graphics card or a capture card. Please be very careful with storage devices because if you accidentally pass through the storage um, for your host itself, your host will crash because it will no longer be able to see its storage. I have seen reports of people doing this where they've incorrectly picked the wrong one and actually trashed the server by losing all of the storage underneath by passing it through to a virtual machine. So most people are probably going to do this for graphics cards, but you can do things like video capture cards or audio cards or anything else. But um, the purpose of this video is really for graphics cards and GPUs. So once you've enabled that device for PCI pass-through, then go to a virtual machine and click on add uh, edit settings and then add another device so we'll click that here and we'll pick a PCI device once you click that add a PCI device you'll then be able to pick from a list of devices you just enabled for pass through and in our case we're going to pick that Quadro P400 in fact in my example I'm going to pick both of them and pass them through to the same virtual machine and what you'll see here, once you've um, selected them and then clicked OK, when we look at the hardware configuration after we've edited the settings, you can now see I've got two PCI devices attached and they're both P400. So the two ones are set for pass-through, I've now added to a single virtual machine. So once you've done that, um, I then installed Linux on this virtual machine and I run a LS PCI or list PCI devices. And what you'll see from this is that those um, two graphics cards are listed in the LSPCI so the the Linux machine even though it's virtual believes it has a real P400 connected not a virtual graphics card and when I look at um, drivers it believes it's using well doesn't just believe it knows it's using um, the Nvidia 440 driver for this rather than um, a VMware tools driver or a um, a virtualized driver or a power virtualized driver so again just showing you that in Linux we're using the actual Nvidia supplied driver because we're accessing the hardware directly um, if I then run Nvidia-SMI which is a tool for looking at the status of um, Nvidia drivers on Linux you can see here that it's found the two P400 cards uh, and you can see both of them there one's 52 
degrees and the other one's 51 degrees. You can see the um, things like uh, fan utilization and other kinds of things in there. But that, that's where you look at statistics for each card. So this Linux box can clearly see both cards. And you can see here that we're on driver version 440.64 and CUDA version 10.2. So if you're doing anything compute intensive um, and you need CUDA, again, this is just a good way of checking that not only is the driver installed properly, but things like CUDA um, have also been installed properly. So one of the things I did with this box, or one of the reasons for doing this on this box, was that I wanted to run folding at home which is a uh, computational workload, uh, protein folding workload um, that use, can use graphics cards. So what I've got here is folding at home, running on that box, and you can see I've got two GPUs, those Quadro P400s. Uh, and they're crunching away doing protein simulations. If I show you the system tab, it tells us a bit more detail about that particular box. And if I zoom in on this section here, you can see that it's detected two P400s um, and it believes it's using CUDA 6.1 but driver 10.020 so again just a, a practical use of passing those cards through and then running an application on them so on to a slightly more serious note one, one of the things you may have seen in the news is this uh, news that uh, PC owners have created the world's most powerful server in search of a, a cure for coronavirus. Um, apparently more powerful than the world's top seven computers combined. Um, and this is all running uh, folding. So the reason I'm mentioning this is that one of the reasons that this um, computer made up of lots of uh, people's computers all combined, one of the reasons that it's so powerful is that GPUs or graphics processing units are being used to run protein simulations. And what I mean by that is simulations of how proteins uh, assemble and fold up. Uh, and the reason that they're doing this is to look for possible cures or vaccines or ways of tackling the coronavirus. So um, and all, all of this computer has been assembled by a project called Folding at Home. So the reason it's called that is because of this protein folding. So it's running protein folding on home computers. So this is where that um, large computers come from. And although it does use CPU power, a large part of this is running GPUs or graphics processing units to run through those compute intensive workloads to look for um, possible cures or vaccines for COVID-19 by running protein simulations. So if you're interested in doing this, um, VMware have built an appliance um, which can be deployed on a vSphere host so you would deploy this software appliance you would then do the PCI pass through that I've just talked to you about before so that this appliance can see your graphics cards and if you wanted to you could help contribute to the uh, folding at home uh, you could contribute individually or you could join the VMware team if you want to find more about this uh, there is a blog uh, that VMware run through the office of the CTO and you can find out more about this folding from home appliance or the work that VMware is doing uh, or even about joining the team. So that might be a possible use of, of putting your practical skills in hand. Once you've learned how to do GPU pass through, you could maybe download that appliance, pass through your GPU, start protein folding and join the VMware team in our attempt to help um, speed up the discovery of a cure or vaccine for COVID-19. So a little bit more of a serious note to the, my end of my videos than normally, but this was essentially a PCI pass-through uh, as part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. I hope you found that useful and thank you very much for your time.